shape. They don't have any extra body parts to slow them down, and their skin is like a rubber boot, and that water flows over it very easily. But in order to move in the water, dolphins have four fins. The strongest one of the dolphin's body is right along the back. This happens to be the tail or the tail flute. So there's Spinnaker giving you a great look at his tail right there. Now the reason that tail is so strong is because there's a huge muscle that runs along either side of the body from the base of that skull to that tail, powering the dolphin to speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour, which is faster than you're supposed to be driving here in Stanley Park. Now while he was in the air, maybe you noticed another fin on the dolphin. And it's right along the upper half of the body that's shaped like the letter C. This happens to be the dorsal fin. Now the dorsal fin acts as a stabilizer and it keeps him moving nice and straight as he throws it over the water. Now each Pacific point sided dolphin has their own unique dorsal fin, just like everybody here has a unique set of fingerprints. And so researchers can identify individual dolphins at any given time by looking at that dorsal fin and then comparing it to a photo catalog. Well, I said there were four fins, that's two, that means there are two left, and so I'm going to show you where they are. Those are the two along the side of the body giving you a wing right now. Those are the pectoral fins, those are the steering wheels of the dolphin. They help that dolphin move in any direction that you need to go in, plus they're the only fin on a dolphin's only fins on a dolphin's body that have bones in them. Now, while throughout the habitat, you may have noticed the beautiful coloration these dolphins have on their body. The upper half of them is a very dark gray, and the underside is a very bright white. You can get a better look at that coloration right here with Spinnaker. Not only does he have black, but he also has a whole bunch of grays and whites and everything in between. Now, this happens to be called counter shading. It helps hide the dolphin in the water column from its prey and its predators. Now light does not travel well in water, so when you look down the water column, you see that dark upper half of the body comparing against the dark water below, and you might lose sight of the dolphin. Now the opposite works just as well. If you look up the water column, you see a bright white belly of the dolphin comparing against the surface of the water, whether by the sun or by the sky, and again, you will lose sight of that dolphin. Well, Coach Spinnaker and Laverne are doing a great job of keeping a close eye on us wherever we move on that dock. That's because these dolphins have good vision above and below the water. But sometimes a dolphin cannot see where it's going. Maybe because there's too much wood in the water, or maybe because it's nighttime. Either way, the dolphin can't see where they're going, even by on sound to see where they're going away. So let's listen to some dolphin sound this afternoon, going with Spinnaker first. Now, when Spinnaker's making these sounds, as you can hear right now, you'll notice that his mouth is tightly closed. But when Laverne was making those vocals, her mouth was wide open. Now, it doesn't matter whether a dolphin's mouth is closed or open, because they don't have vocal cords like these. Well, of course they don't. Instead, the dolphin will use a blowhole, which is at the back of the head behind those eyes. And by moving all the muscles around the blowhole, they can make all sorts of different chirps and clicks and whistles. But how do dolphins hear these sounds? They don't have big flop ears like the human do, because if they did, that would cause drag while they're swimming and slow them down. Instead, the dolphin will use its lower jaw, connected to its inner ear. And this way, they can get an acoustic image of everything that's around them. Now, one of the reasons the dolphins make these sounds is to find food. And of course, the favorite food of the dolphin happens to be fish. Now, the main fish we see the dolphins here at the aquarium is called herring. It's a fatty and nutritious fish that keeps that dolphin's blood layer nice and fixed and they stay warm in the water. We also give them paper, which is another type of fish, it's slightly smaller, but we also give them squid. Now, squid and paper are a great source of fresh water for these dolphins. If dolphins being animals just like us, if they were to drink the salt water they lived in, they would feel sick. And so they have to rely on their food for fresh water because they can't find it anywhere else. Now while looking for food in the wild, a dolphin has to make sure it does not become food itself. There's two animals that live in the water with the dolphins that would eat a dolphin if they had a chance, and these animals happen to be killer whales and sharks. Now to deal with the killer whale, a dolphin would use its speed and its agility to jump out of the water to get away from the killer whale at the location as well as the killer whale open it up. Now to deal with the shark, a dolphin 
don't have a different strategy. That's also been used for Rostro, which is the pointy end at the front of the body where the upper and the lower jaws meet. That Rostro right there on my hand. So that Rostro is about as hard as a baseball bat. And by swimming as fast as it can, that dolphin would wrap its Rostro into the gill area of the shark, turning the shark and easy to feel it. Now we don't have any sharks in the habitat to demonstrate this behavior. However, I now have a very dangerous basketball in my hands. Now with this basketball, Spinnaker is going to use his rostrum and bring it back to me as if the ball were a shark. So using a little imagination, go ahead, Spin, go get the red shark. Hold on, Spin, great accuracy. Now these dolphins have done a great job of showing us a little more of what their aquatic world is like. And you can all help protect the underwater world of a dolphin by taking home your garbage with you every time you visit the beach so nothing ends up in the water to hurt these creatures. You can also do your part at home by reducing or using animal recycling in your garbage. Well, to give you one last great look at these dolphins, Spinker is going to come right up to the water to everybody's right hand side. So please have your cameras and your eyes ready because here he comes. On behalf of Spinnaker, Laverne, Lady Laura, and myself, thanks for watching the 430 Dolphin Show. Now, if you have any questions about the dolphins, Lady Laura and I will be more than happy to answer them. Please give us a few more minutes to keep working with these dolphins, and then you can meet us in the green tent behind the dock. If you want to check the dolphins out underwater, just go to either end of the habitat where we find a set of stairs that leads to underwater while well, close freeway. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day here at the Vancouver Aquarium. And again, thanks for watching. Exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. 